guys welcome back to another video and you know this time i thought that you know whenever i usually talk about a tv show i kind of it always has some kind of negative it usually is all negative let's face it so today i decided let's do something a little bit more Let's do something a little bit more positive and let's talk about something that I actually really enjoyed that I watched recently and that was it, it, it's kind of not so new right now because it was it's been out for it was out for a couple of months before I actually watched it but anyway it's new-ish new-ish and that is a show called Motherland Fort Salem okay and I stumbled upon it like everyone on my Twitter feed was talking about it, everyone, and then everyone was drawing it. <laughs> and you know what happens when everyone starts drawing something? I kind of have to watch it because the art kind of makes me want to watch it. So that is what happened. And one day I put the BBC iPlayer on my TV just to check out something to watch. And what do you know? It was right there. So thanks to the BBC because you never actually advertised it. <laughs> it's such typical of the BBC. They're so useless. They just put it there and just hope people will see it. N now that it turned out to be actually a hit, that they they are actually advertising it. Shocking. Anyway, so you know, I I kind of was expecting to not like it because. You know, sometimes people can overhype something and just sometimes some things aren't exactly to your taste. But this was like witches and <laughs> in this kind of like alternate reality with armies of witches militarized. <laughs> it sounded intriguing. So, I mean, I like that kind of stuff. So I went in open minded. And sometimes I don't, but I went in open-minded and liked it. At the start, I won't lie, I had no idea what the hell was going on with anything, and everything just seemed to be quite random. There was just balloons flo floating in everywhere, and I, I still don't really know why the balloons were the... Were the <laughs> All I know is that now whenever I see a blue balloon... I start to get a little bit sweaty, and it, it, I, my, the palms of my hands sweat, and I start to shiver, and I start looking. <laughs> Luckily, we're in quarantine, so there aren't massive amounts of people in one place anymore. Well, some places, other people are idiots, but let's not worry about that. So anyway, I'm not gonna do a long video describing the show because. I feel like that's counterproductive. I kind of just want to say positive things about it and, and talk about it, you know? The one thing that I really enjoyed about this was I was kind of coming off Supergirl and the really negative, just awful feelings of watching that show. You know, watching characters that you previously really enjoyed just be trashed and written just really badly. and. That show's awful. <laughs> so I came into this show not expecting much, but with an open mind. I was I was cautiously optimistic, which is you know, maybe something I'm never, but it was a Saturday night and I I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting to watch as much as I did. But I watched all ten episodes in two nights. I watched the first seven on Saturday night and then the next night I watched the rest, the next three. Okay, so firstly, if I binge a show, you know it's good. Because I can't really sit there for hours and just watch the same thing <laughs> if it's kind of mediocre or it's not that great. I'm just not that person who can do that. I don't really watch a lot of TV anyway, 
So if it's good, I'll binge it. So if I binge it, you know it's good, right? So, okay. What was really interesting about this show was that it's not actual characters that you hate. And as I said, coming off Supergirl and going into a show, and in Supergirl there's these characters that you really hate and they get deep in your bones and you just really dislike them. And you really dislike watching the show then, it becomes this really unenjoyable thing. Whereas in Fort Mother and Salem, I found this kind of like weird bad guy, guy in General Adler that we, me and her, she, she and I, we have beef, okay? We have beef. What was with this her stealing women's youth? That first aging scene, okay? <laughs> I gotta tell you, it creeped me the hell out. One minute, there's this young, this young girl, <laughs> and in the next minute, an old woman, and I gotta tell you, I was not expecting it. <laughs> it, it took me a few seconds to kind of, it was a bit surreal, I gotta tell you. One thing, it's, it, it was really nice to kind of get a character who you kind of dislike, but it's like a good dislike. It's like, you're like telling the characters, don't trust this woman, don't trust her, don't do this. And that was kind of the same for, for Scylla as well. Like, <laughs> I spent probably the most of that first few episodes kind of like doing like a, get away from her. <laughs> Leave her alone! Ah, <laughs> uh, no, don't kiss her! Ah, uh, no! <laughs> that, li that light the thing, I won't lie, it really creeped me out. Like, <laughs> it took me a couple of episodes to get used to it because it was like really weird. <laughs> it it's really strange how I started off feeling that way about that character. And then, actually, I kind of understood her. <laughs> she made sense to me. Which was, you know, interesting. <laughs> um, you know, another character that I just really, really, really loved, and she's my favorite, was just Anna Costia. She was my absolute favorite character because in the beginning, you kind of see her as this kind of hard sergeant who has to kind of like mold these cadets, and they're all like filled with raging hormones and problems <laughs> and you think she's just this hard sergeant major type you know like in those old movies they're like always hard and they never really they just like pat you on the back and then just go pick you up and like throw you back into the fray and then as the as the show goes on and, and the episodes go further on she kind of, we see more of her, and we see that actually she's kind of this um, motherly type figure that's kind of really intriguing. And at the end, how strange that she is the one who sympathizes with Scylla. You know, we know it's because of her, her magic and what she's seen. You know, when she says that she hesitated or something like that, it, it's been a while, I, it's, been, it's been a couple of weeks, I can't remember the exact words but I feel like it's time for a rewatch so I'm I'm sure I'll get them and you know as customary with any shows about witches now we have the mandatory orgy scene <laughs> but at least with this one the last one I saw was the chronicles of Sabrina the teenage witch which was random and weird and just like wait you wait a minute you're going to somebody else's house for a random orgy <laughs> oh yay <laughs> don't we all do this i think that we all do this we all just have a party and then just randomly go off to somebody's house somebody who you kind of you don't really like but you know just orgy <laughs> In Motherland, Fort Salem, it was kind of a bit more tasteful, I guess. And 
it was not distracting or weird. Sometimes these scenes are just thrown in for like root shock value and it's just boring. So yeah, I was happy about that, at least. Now I need to address the old biddies because this is important, as I just said. So she has these um, old ladies who follow her around, General Edda, and uh, <laughs> they are the storers, containers of her youth. And if one dies, just one, General Adler dies. Now this, for me, is a really big flaw to this woman. <laughs> She's insanely vulnerable. Insanely vulnerable. But She's reliant on these, on these four, well, not, she's reliant on these old ladies who are actually young, but they appear old. I thought that she just sucked all their youth and they become old. I've been told and reassured that they aren't really old, they just appear old. But that could be my friend just trying to reassure me and that General Adder isn't just a megalomaniac you know, seeking more power and egotistical, you know. She is, of course, someone who seeks eternal life because only she, she can control anything. She's kind of, she's a, she's a bit weird. <laughs> but, you know, I, I like, I like that I didn't like her, if that makes sense. I like that she, I like, what I loved about this show was that it 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 does things that it, nobody asked it to do like it's a majority female cast and and their purpose isn't there to fuel a narrative to show you how woke they are like their color is never addressed their sexuality is never addressed they aren't big things because we see those things, if you know what I mean. As a, as a writer, I get this in that, that oftentimes when you put in a black character or, or a gay character or, or you know, a, 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 mon a minority character, that they're only there to fuel, they're only important when you address their sexuality or their skin color, whereas in the show, those things are never addressed. They just do their job which is which was really interesting because you had these powerful women and it's you know it's it's never questioned <laughs> if that makes sense i i really enjoyed that it was like i'm here and i'm not going to explain why i'm here because i work i'm here because i did it I, I enjoyed that. It was they are more than their 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 sexuality or their skin color, I guess is what I'm trying to say. When shows tend to rely only on using them for stories for for those reasons, then a show kind of doesn't really have much because it's saying that those people are only worthy of telling stories about <clears throat> oppression because of those things that they are. I hope I'm explaining this in a way that is good because I'm trying not to sound like an idiot, but I'm hoping I don't. <sighs> anyway, that's what I really, really, really loved. Uh, you know, one thing I really loved, I noticed it right from the start, and I, I didn't realize that it would go on throughout the whole thing. But the actual beauty of the shots, the whole cinematography of the whole show, is insanely beautiful. Many of the scenes, in fact most of the scenes, are kind of shot in like a dark room or a dark scene with like an orange golden glow. And it often casts them in like, in like a halo effect. I don't know, I found that really interesting. I still would like to know why that was a thing, because 
I thought it was really cool. It only differed in the end when you saw Scylla in the, what was it, a dungeon or something? Tied up. When it's completely black, except for white lights. Which was interesting. Okay, so I, I think I've said... I think I've said a lot about this show. I mean... I don't have a script saying this. It's just my enthusiasm saying it, so... <laughs> and it's like 10 o'clock at night as I recall this, because every time I press record, the world comes to life around me. It could be 3 o'clock in the morning and the whole world can come to life as soon as I press record. It's so annoying. The one thing that I truly, truly appreciated about this show, and I'm a woman who... I, I can do soppy romance stuff in, in its place. But with shows like this, I don't want it. <laughs> And sometimes shows kind of really pander to that kind of girly kind of thing. And I don't really appreciate it. Whereas with this show, this show didn't pander at all. It really um, did the opposite, in fact. I mean, I was completely shocked. They presented to you completely... Uh, strong characters from beginning to end whether those characters were on the side of you know good or bad or you know in the in the gray shade in the middle they were always strong characters who kind of challenged the way that characters are written especially female characters and in, you know especially there's there's like strength in these women and that's kind of really, kind of rare in TV shows with women. Women are always kind of seen as the weak and meek and mild, even when they're kind of cast as strong, you know. If we, if we segue back to Supergirl, you know, we have that, you know, the stereotype. You know, Supergirl's supposed to be like the strongest woman in the world, the girl of steel, but she's just weak of character. Whereas in this show, I mean, and in the very last episode, which completely knocked me off course, and it is a complete example of what I am trying to say with this last point, how they don't sugarcoat things for you. It's a majority female cast, so I imagine they knew they were writing for like, a female audience. But what do they do? Okay. <laughs> they go into this battle scene, get completely ambushed. Two of the officers burning at the stake. One of them is the really hot one. I forget her name, but Lieutenant something. I Googled her the other day, but now I've forgotten. But yeah, you know the one I mean. So she's not going to be in season two. That's a bit sucks for people who think she was kind of hot. But anyway, <laughs> they just really blew me away with that end because they could have gone soft. They did not know they were going to get a season two, but they went hard. That could have been the last thing we ever saw, right? And that is what they did. That was brave. That was freaking brave. And I think that is. They basically killed, or seemingly killed, two of the main cast. Like, obviously they're not dead, but you know. One is now an old biddy, the other one is the old biddy. It really did blow me away. I don't like being patronized and condescended to... And oftentimes on TV shows that are kind of like for women, I kind of feel like they do that, you know? I, I like, I mean, I grew up watching 
I mean, I grew up with brothers, so like I grew up watching all these kind of like war films and 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 shit. <laughs> Nothing was ever sugarcoated, you know. It was always like tough, strong. You know, the good guys died sometimes, and that is what Motherland Fort Salem gave. And it's like, okay, where have you been all my life? <laughs> Where have you been? And at the moment, there's this influx of shows like this, like Warrior Nun and The Old Guard, where it kind of gives you these strong women who kind of like doing things. And it's like, this is both the worst time and the best time to be alive, okay? <laughs> the problem now is that this show came in with such an amazing first season. I, I can't think of anything to really say bad about it, to be honest. I mean, I'm sure there's little niggles here and there, but not really great things, if I'm honest. But the problem is, for them to keep the same momentum, or to pick up a gear in the second season, because they've set themselves such a goal to beat with this first season. Usually first seasons are a bit blare. But with this first season, it's like... <sighs> you know, I'm I'm in love. Just keep my interest. So in season two, I can like propose. And then we can go into season three. And have babies in season four. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like like that. Let's... I hope they do. Okay, I hope they do. But people have great expectations for season two. And people and the show can it has to meet that. And uh it it won't be easy, but I don't see why they can't do it, to be honest. They still have all the twists and turns to to give and with this real dark dark storylines as well which you know if you watch some of my videos you know i like that kind of dark kind of twisted stuff <laughs> and i would i i want to see more of anacostia i feel anacostia i feel like we don't know a lot about her backstory i would like to know more about her backstory we know that she's like an orphan but i would like to know more about her personal life what does she what does she do? Let's 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 just do season two following her, you know? B bring the hot lieutenant back. These are witches, right? Let's do some kind of spells. Let's bring her back. Yeah, bring bring her back. Lieutenant Purpoint. I just googled her name, yeah. Bring her back. Like do some magic and unburn her. But that, that scene was so amazing because I just didn't expect it. The brutality of it. The absolute... It was, it, was, it was intense. It was insane. It was amazing. It was a scene that like makes you hold your breath. And like... You just, you're just thinking the whole time. What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? What the hell? This wasn't supposed to happen. These are... These are women, they're not supposed, this isn't supposed to happen to them. It's insane. But the flaw was, the flaw, taking these old ladies into battle. And like I said at the beginning of this video, right? General Adler has to have these old biddies. And they can just follow her around. And they can like, just, you know, make strange noises and click and do strange things and play chess. And they are her lungs, her heart, her every organ that keeps her alive. They, that is them for her. If just one dies. I mean, they get the youth back, but they're dead. What was weird during the orgy when uh, General Adler was having some privacy, intimate moment 
that the old biddies weren't around. So what the hell? I I appreciate that they they know you know boundaries, <laughs> but also they must have been somewhere close, which is a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> ah, okay. So I guess this is gonna be the end of the video because this is just supposed to be like a real kind of fun video about. Motherland Fort Salem, which is a show, as you know, I really liked, and this is me kind of fangirling. Yes, I fangirl sometimes. Yay. <laughs> Yay to me. <laughs> See, I'm not always serious, as you know, and I can be flattery. I can bring it. I can, I can be charming and and nice and kind and just brilliant when I like a show. Just when when a show is not that great, you know, there's, there's what, what, how can you sugarcoat that? Um, yeah. So, I would like to thank everybody on my Twitter feed, everyone. Everyone on my Twitter feed that I follow and put that show on my feed. Every single person. There's like too many people to name and remember. But everyone, and everyone who does art or did it at the time that made me go, actually, you know, I would like to watch this show, but I uh, I don't know where because streaming never seems to freaking work for me. But thanks, BBC. Even though you didn't tell me it was there and I found it by accident. They're like that. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of the time that uh, last year when um, Gentleman Jack was on. They billed the two ends as friends. Like, what are friends for? <laughs> like, BBC. Friends don't do those things, okay? <laughs> The BBC is so funny. Okay. So that is going to be the end of the video because I fangled enough. And I'm I'm going to go. I'm trying to stay, you know. You know, this girl, you know, she likes the show, but she's she's cool. You know, she's too cool to kind of fall head over heels and, you know, be all blabbering. And yeah, it's, so I'm going to go now before that happens. <laughs> So, until the next one, stay safe, take care, and see you next time.